just want to thank you. Oh, wait. Yep. We're on the we're on the live right now. Gabriella's on the little chat airline too. Oh, 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 o
uh, in slapping stuff between slices of bread, but um, <laughs> but for some reason it was named to honor him or something like that. The first person to use the word sandwich. I will look into the etymology of the word sandwich and, and I'm curious. yeah, we'll discuss uh, as, as, I, as I may well be here next weekend too. So, have you had a sandwich in sandwich? Uh, I had a very good sandwich today. Yes. Uh, <laughs> And of course, I've had a lobster roll, which is, you know, kind of a sandwich. I guess it qualifies. It's between it's on a roll. So, uh, yeah, there's a very good little. Uh, oh, this is great. The the, the uh, there's a little local place called Lambert's Farm Market. No. Yes. It's actually a, it's a little chain. There's several around Massachusetts. I, I gather. Yeah. Standing for Lambert's. Yeah. What's I it don't. Like? I don't think we're related. It's a really, it's a, it's a cozy little store, but very well stocked. You know, I, I needed to get some stuff to make pasta the other night. And they had like, you know, good San Marzano tomatoes and good olive oil and all that. So they have a whole little Italian section. And um, so I was very pleased. And I got a good sandwich from there today in sandwich. <laughs> does, does it feel any different? What's it, what does it feel like to eat a sandwich in sandwich? It just, it's, it, it's like being home, you know? <laughs> It's like, it's a bit surreal, I would think. It's, yeah, sandwich upon sandwich. And I love sandwiches, so, you know, it's it's a good place to be. Is there, and Cape, is what, what's your, what is your beverage there, sir? I, I have some hot cider. Hot cider. Which is a very New England kind of thing, in my okay. mind. Cinnamon, are you a cinnamon guy? I didn't put any cinnamon in today. I, I, I've been known to do that. And cloves and all. I mean, I, sometimes, you know, like the holidays, you do, you do the, the really elaborate hot cider thing but this was just took some cider and put it in the microwave it looks lovely it's very tasty it's 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 a little cold here i'm not not terribly but uh and there's been like no snow since i've been here or anything so it's crazy i was grace and i were flying to the bay area to san francisco oh my god this week coming up that, that didn't happen though huh well no this, uh, this oh you're going you are going okay but you know we just thought Nah, we're gonna wait yeah. till the end of the month. Yeah, this I mean it's been just brutal out there. I mean I see because it'll I, be all st everywhere, you know, at the ranch. I feel bad not being there to help Lisa pick up sticks, pick yeah. up pieces. Yeah. But I think there will still be enough to pick up when we get there. But we just we oh, we yeah. send it in a couple of weeks. Good. Yeah. I yeah, when I when I saw the footage of people kayaking in the mission district down the street. I Kayaking said, in the mission, in the mission. Yes. yes. That's insanity. Yeah, man, you know, if, if if Robert if Robert Hunter had known, he would have written "Kayaking along in the mission in the rain." Yeah. Thank you for introducing me to him. Okay, my pleasure. Um, so yeah, so Cape Cod is beautiful, of course. People know that, um, and uh, you know, this time of year, it's just. It's just so quiet and nice and not, you know, not crawling with vacationers and tourists and That's what happens here too. Yeah. You know, yeah. like in the summer, there's 500,000 extra people. Right. And today I walked on the beach and I was the only one. Yeah. And, and yesterday we went down to Woods Hole and uh, visited. They have a very, very sweet little uh, aquarium there. So we walked around the aquarium in Woods Hole. What's and the aquarium? You know, it's mostly local sea life, you know, um, bass and, of course, lobsters, the ever popular lobsters and crabs and stuff like that. And uh, some really, you know, some some very weird looking fish and some very nice looking fish. As so nice the as they have lobster there, but then then you go then you can go eat a lobster roll like at the concession stand. Well, not there. They, I don't think they serve lobster there, but, you know, there, there's lobster to be had very nearby if, if it's it's kind of strange looking at a lobster there you know like as as a as a display of the wonders of nature and then say boy they sure are tasty though oh. and <laughs> you, so you, you have had a have you had lobster since you've been in sandwich yeah oh yeah yeah i i, I had oh i think it was since since yeah I, I was on last saturday it was on sunday um we went for uh a nice long hike on a nice a nice trail somewhere and then my friend split off to go somewhere else we each had our own cars and i said i'm gonna find me my first cape cod lobster roll and i picked exactly the right place there was a choice of a couple of places that were very highly rated and i found a place that's right on the marina 
right on the water. Uh, it was a beautiful day. It was like, it was probably in the fifties that day. Uh, it's a, there's like a big seafood restaurant, but they also have like a little fish market and takeout stand. Ooh. And, you know, lobster rolls have become a little more skimpy given the expense of lobster these days. And As of th this was, this was the most generously stuffed lobster roll maybe I've ever had. Um, and, uh, they had little picnic tables outside. So I sat by the water and ate my lobster roll and it was, it was pretty, pretty blissful. Is it a hot dog bun? It's a hot dog bun. Yeah. That's, that's the traditional lobster roll vehicle of. And is there, is there a side? Um, did I get a side? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got some fries. Yeah. Um, fries go with that lobster roll. Where you get chips, you can get potato salad. They have a variety of options. Um, yeah, and it was just uh, everything I hoped it would be. And tomorrow, I'm going back down to Woods Hole for dinner with Carla Kilstead and her family. Woo! Woo! Please yeah. give her a big hug for me. I haven't I, seen her in about 77 years. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I was actually Seriously, forgetting. Not talking like, I, yeah, no, she I was, was, she was a student of mine. Yeah, yeah, well. I was forgetting the last time I saw her. It's been so long since I saw her. I was, I was trying to figure it out. But it, we, we talked on the phone the other day and she was just, you know, I, I sent her a text and she was, she just like called back instantly. It was like just thrilled to hear from me. And just, yeah, we just, so uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that. For those who don't know, Carla Kilstead is a person we met in the Bay Area. She's actually originally from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And then she lived in the Bay Area. Uh, was in an incredible group called uh, the Tin Hat Trio. Later, they changed their name to Tin Hat because the size of the group changed. Uh, she was in a wonderful group called Charming Hostess. Charming Hostess. With Julia Eisenberg, the late, wonderful Julia Eisenberg. Um, and uh, she's an incredible violinist, singer, composer. Um, so the, I, I'm, you know, I've known her going on 30 years. I need to get her on the show. That would be great. I'll I'll tell her about the show. I'll tell her about the show. Yeah. And and is John, John and Allison, are they near there at John and Allie? John Evans? I'm pretty sure they yeah, I know John has worked with Carla and Matthias. I think they're like right. I think they're very close, yeah. Uh and um and I'm trying to think who else lives there. There's like there's a bunch of rock stars around there. Well, I've I I just a few days earlier I went and saw my pal uh, Johnny Spompanato from NRBQ and his brother Joey is here too uh, and we talked on the phone we're hoping to get together sometime soon so uh, you know love those guys so much so it's been it's been great I you know I do have this little social scene here that I can connect with and my friends who live here of course um, but it's also you know I'm finding it there's no compulsion to really do anything here, which is really nice. You know, when I, when I was in Connecticut, of course I had in the winter. Yeah. When I was, when I was in Connecticut, I had the craziness with the four manic dogs and the, uh, and the goats and the, you know, it was, it was great there. Uh, but then I also felt compelled to go, you know, it was like an hour and a half drive to New York or an hour and 15 minutes to New York. So I would get down to the city and go back and forth. Um, and then when I was in Yonkers, I was like, you know, half an hour from the city. So and I, I wanted to maximize that time. So I wound up going into the city and doing a lot of stuff. Uh, here, I do not have that option, which is really kind of nice. It's kind of liberating. I don't, don't you know, I'm, I'm missing some music I would really like to be seeing and I'm missing some theater I would like to be seeing. Um, some shows that I wanted to see are closing before, mm -hmm. likely before I'm back in New York for any length of time. Yeah, I mean, Winter Music Fest, we're both missing that right now. Yeah, uh, so, you know, that's that's a shame. There may be some some things on the tail end of Winter Music Fest I may be able to see. It depends. I'm, I'm figuring out my schedule yet. But uh, so any, I'm, I'm jumping the gun here. Talking the house. You, yeah. news, there's no news about that. No the news. house. The house thing is like. It, I'm sort of used to the glacial pace of it. I'm not. That doesn't mean I'm not frustrated by it, but it's kind of it's just a reality of my life. The appraisal finally happened. We haven't heard any result of the appraisal that would change the situation radically, but you know the, the appraiser then reports to the mortgage company that's lending the buyer the money, and they you know they ascertain that's a fair price, which I'm sure they will, you know, um, 
our realtor is confident. The people on the buyer side are confident uh, that it's not really going to change anything. And then once all that is laid out, they uh, they name a closing date, which we thought was going to be December, and it kept getting nudged, and nudged, then it hit the holidays, which slows everything down. So, you know, it could be a week, it could be two. I hope it's not much longer than that. Although, you know, if I'm here, I'm here. My friend said I can stay as long as I'd like, although I always you know, try not to overstay my welcome, even though they're incredibly generous about it. So uh, we'll see. And then, you know, if 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 I do feel like I should be back in the city, I will try other friends, you know, and, you know, I, I, I have options, but it's uh, I'd like to have the option of actually living somewhere. So you've been looking. Still kind well, of I've been looking. I've been looking, but I can't I like can't pull I can't pull the trigger on it. It's browsing, you know, and I will see a place that looks great. And I'll say, yeah, well, that's going to be gone in two days. And it usually is. But there are places that's, you know, like the there's no shortage of places that are in the approximate range I'm looking for and that are in the neighborhoods I'm interested in living in. So, uh, you know, and it actually, you know, I'm thinking if it extends even into spring, then, you know, kids, kids leave college and go home. So apartments open up, you know, there's stuff like that. So, you know, we'll see. I, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't know. I don't know the dynamics of, of the rental market in New York at all. Um, I'm just learning it as I go along. So, Thank but you. there's, you know, there, there are places that don't make me want to faint when I see the price, which is nice. And there are, uh, there are neighborhoods I would be really happy to live in. So, you know, it'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen. In the Maybe meantime, I'll be in a place when I'm, when I get there. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm on the Cape with hot cider. So, hot yeah. cider. Hi, Dr. Laura. Dr. Laura's here. We're coast to coast. We're, we're all over the place. Coast to I coast. I love it. Midwest. So who's on your show tomorrow? Uh, on our show tomorrow, it's another, we, we've been sort of not, not having a lot of emphasis on guests. Uh, D David actually invited a guy from, from a band, a, a dead, a dead tribute band, I think from Indianapolis. I'm trying to remember their name. I'm not remembering their name. Um, and, uh, or maybe it's not Indianapolis. We talked to somebody from Indianapolis recently, uh, but I, it's kind of a blur. And then we're talking, there's this really interesting guy named David Rappaport, who's a, a classical or, you know, modern classical composer. And uh, he, he apparently has done something. I'm going to listen to it in the morning before we do the show. He's done some kind of orchestration of uh, help on the way that I hear is really cool. So I'm going to, I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet, but I will. And uh, so he's going to join us and then we'll be talking about, you know, the usual stuff. Um, they're just about to put out the, you know, the 50th anniversary edition of Bobby's Ace, um, which includes a re not just remastered, but remixed version of, of the first of the album itself, wow. which Bobby remixed to fix, address some things that he thought he wasn't happy with on on that on the first version of the album i love the first version of the album but i've heard some of the different mixes and they they bring out some things that are really cool and you know it's always surprising to hear something you've known for 50 years and say oh wait i you know that wasn't there before or i never noticed it before because it was down in the mix and so they did they get a how did they do that well did they had the you know, they had the, the masters they had the original multi multi-track masters. Yeah. You know, they, they keep all that stuff. That, that's the wonderful thing about the vault is they have everything. And, uh, I have a vault. It's my, in my closet, right? Right. Now. Right. It's a more modest vault, but it's a vault. 15, two inch tapes in there. there you, that's, that's, you know, that's a start. <laughs> and then, um, so it's that it's the original album. And then it is the 50th anniversary live version of it that Bobby performed at Radio City. Or, or, uh, I was going to say earlier this year, but it was last year. It was 2022. And uh, which was fantastic, you know, which had the horns and, uh, you know, all that. So uh, and some guest singers and you know, really, really great. So uh, we'll be playing a track from that and talking about that. And what else, you know, and just the, the usual uh, Grateful Dead foolishness. Have you been watching anything new? I saw two 
really terrific movies this week, but both on Netflix. Um, Glass Onion, the new the there was this mystery movie called Knives Out uh, last year or two years ago. Glass Onion is a is it's not a sequel because it's like got different characters in it, but it's it's a Knives Out. Uh, Daniel Craig is the is the constant. He's the, he's the detective in both of them, and this is so funny, and okay. so it's it's got an incredible cast. Um, it winds up being like it was made, you know, it was pro- it was made during the pandemic, um, but it winds up being incredibly prophetic about <laughs> Elon Musk and Twitter. It's they they go to the home of this ridiculous billionaire, you know, ridiculously extravagant, self obsessed you know, wants to take over the world billionaire um, who's played by Edward Norton, who I always love. Um, and uh, um, Janelle Monet is in it and she's incredible. She's, she's so, so talented on every conceivable level. Um, Kate Hudson. Um, uh, uh, who else? Who else? Um, just a splendid cast all the way up and down. And uh, glass it's onion. glass onion is yeah glass onion and it's subtitled uh, a knives out mystery. It's pretty. And, it's like the first thing you see when, or it's on mine because I've seen knives out, so it's the, yeah. it, it's the first it jumps yeah. on right away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So and then Have tonight, tonight tonight we watched uh, the musical Matilda, which was I don't know if you know anything about Matilda, but. There was a, a, a book called Matilda by Roald Dahl, you know, who's also re- responsible for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And little uh, girl, Matilda. Yeah, a little girl named Matilda, uh, who comes from <laughs> an insanely dysfunctional family, um, and uh, and is sent to this to this monstrous boarding school run by. I won't even tell you who plays the headmistress of, the, of this. Uh, I knew I knew who it was, but the person who plays the the monstrous headmistress would be unrecognized possibly unrecognizable if you didn't know who she was and 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 she's incredible in the role um and uh it was a musical on broadway well first first there was a book by roald dahl then there was a theatrical film uh without music not a musical um which uh, danny devito was in and directed um around i think around the year 1996 97 something like that then it was a broadway musical which like won tony awards and got lots of nominations for tony awards um and uh now it's it's a movie and it's a great movie musical it's incredibly beautifully shot and art i mean it feels like an old school it's very modern looking and visually stunning but uh, it's got the feel of a really great musical in terms of the, the art direction and the choreography and everything. The performances are incredible. So Matilda, Matilda the Musical. Matilda the Musical on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's cool because it, it you, you think it's going to be like a kiddie musical. And then it takes some very weird turns and it goes to some very strange places. And it's about, you know, it's about this extremely alienated child who's like, who is brilliant and loves books and, and has always had that part of her suppressed. So it's a real, it's a girl power story, you know, in a really cool way. Uh, and uh, it's, it's just, it's brilliant. I just loved it. So see Matilda, everybody. See Matilda. And you watch this with your. Watch this with, with uh, one, one of my, my hosts. So the other one was not in, into seeing a movie tonight. So retired upstairs to read. And, and now you're there until I'm here until it's open ended. I mean, you know, they've said stay until you, as long as you have to. Uh, I have to kind of decide how what have to means. You know, I mean, uh, but you know, I'll 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 get a sense of if I should go down to the city and be closer to the action. If I get as soon as I get word of when the closing is happening, I'll I'll have a much a much you bigger. You start picture. hearing them shutting closing the cupboards and slamming the door really loud it's time to leave (laughs) yeah i don't think they'll give me i don't think you know you know but yeah i i i i've learned to be sensitive to my surroundings let me put it that way i've had i've had to because i've been staying with three different sets of people 
but I think I did all right in terms of the, you know, I'm not, I'm not the thing that wouldn't leave, you know, there was, there, there was, there was, there was a, uh, Art there was, I, a good house guest. I'm a great house guest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I try to be, I try to be, you know, and I, you know, I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll kick in for the cooking. I'll, I'll kick in for groceries. I'll, you know, I, and I try to be self-sufficient. Like I don't, I don't hover over my friends and say, you know, what are we doing today? I'll say, I think I'll go take a walk, which I did today. I went and got a sandwich at Lambert's farm market. And how close are you to water? Um, maybe a mile or so. Yeah, I mean, there's water all around you and on the Cape, on every side. So, uh, yeah, I, I haven't actually been on a beach so far, but I've been near water a number of times. I'm so excited you're going to see Carla. Yeah, I'm, I've, I'm so thrilled. I mean, it's just, it worked out. I was hoping. <laughs> and it's really funny because when we talked yesterday about the possibility of getting together either today or tomorrow, and she's going to New York on Monday morning to, to work on a new piece. So uh, so the, the window is very small, but I'm really glad we're able to get it together. And I'll get to meet her kids, you know, and. I've seen them. And yeah. And stuff. I follow her. Yeah. Yeah, definitely need to get her on. And I just got a message from Sarah. For those of you that watched the show last night, Sarah Booth, George Booth is Booth's daughter. Right. Last and would love to come back next week. So she'll be back, which will be fun. Wonderful. Yeah. So if you're in your, I will be out there. Um, the first weekend in March, I'll be up in New England and then we'll be coming down to New York after that. So, okay. I have a feeling you'll be, you'll be close. I hope so. I hope so. And you're doing your show. Are you at this card table? Are we at the card table now? We are. I'm at the very card table. Yes. That's exciting. Yeah, it's it's a it's it's a nice little setup. So we've been in. Is this the? Oh no, you've been in quite a. You've been in the West Coast. Your house. On a train. That's right. I did it on a train. I did it from a train station. I did it. I, I did it from train station uh, and the car and the train. Right, right. Uh, yeah, there was one time I actually got on the train and while, uh, yeah, yeah, it was on a train from the Capitol Theater, and then there was another time from New Haven. Um, I've done it from my place in my temporary place in Connecticut. I've done it from my temporary place in Yonkers, um, and uh, now Cape Cod. I'm I'm, I'm on tour. <laughs> Well, 11, 11, 11, 11, the tour. I know we need that shirt. 11, 11 the touring. Tom, yeah. It's somewhere when I get out to the Bay area, it's going to be like that because I'm going to stay in Oakland and then Marin and then the city and then up North. And yeah. Same thing. Yeah. And then, you know, I also want to think about when I can get out to California again. And I, I think it'll probably have to wait until after I'm settled. Unless if this if this turns into a ridiculously extended process, the, the closing on the house, I I could also go to L.A. and stay with my family out there and maybe make a quick trip to the Bay Area. But I don't think it's going to come to that. So I, I probably won't get out west until after the dust settles. <laughs> When when is Mexico? Is it next week? Uh, no, I think it's. I don't even know. I, I've been I've I've been so out of the loop on that. Um, is David uh, going? No. No, I, you know I we were both planning to go last year, and of course there was no last year. So, uh, you know we'll we'll uh, we'll I think we're we're waiting to find out if we are going to host. The halftime broadcast of it. Oh, you must. Well, we haven't found out yet. Uh, that it, I think it depends on how technically limited Nugs.net is in terms of their their streaming capabilities from Mexico. So we'll see. I'm sure it'll happen. I'm 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 willing it to happen. Just like I think you guys are going to have to be doing that during the for the last tour. Again, we have not been, <clears throat> nothing's been confirmed yet, but it's, 
it's in the discussions, the early discussion stages. Cool. Last year, I don't think we found out we were doing it until like a week before or something like that. It was, you know, because, you know, it's all about it's all about budgets and stuff. Yeah, I understand. Same thing. Hello, Bill. So but you're close to Bill Winokur. Bill, Gary's in the Cape, on the Cape. Hi, Hi Bill. Got that that side of the country representing. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, so yeah, it does start next weekend, uh, Mexico. Yeah. You know, shows what I know. <laughs> yeah. Mark Benson was a dear, dear friend. A couple, actually, um, Linda, a few people, three people from LMC in Benton Harbor. Suzanne's here too, coast to coast, totally coast. -to -coast. Wonderful. Hi, Suzanne. Saying lots of prayers, lots of prayers, lots of prayers. Yes, indeed. Ernie Maddox. You remember Ernie? Well, my friend. Um, so next week you'll still be hanging out in that groovy room. That is, that seems to be the case, uh, unless something changes abruptly. Well, uh, what do you think you'll be doing next Saturday night? You know, my friends always go to bed early, so you know it's no imposition on them. So, you know, if it happens to be oh a few minutes after eleven, you know. Uh, maybe later than five after 11, maybe, maybe even later than 10 after 11. If it's 11, 11, I think there's a, a more than excellent chance that I'll be on. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think I think that's what I'll be doing. All right. Yeah, certainly in theory, and I I expect in practice. Well, go have some lobster for us. Well, not tonight anymore. But <laughs> not tonight. are you a late night eater? I well, in New York, you always are. You know, there's always a, there's always a slice calling your name somewhere. You're but uh, yeah, right now, do you do you snack at night? Um, sometimes. Uh, to, tonight I uh, I don't feel the need for anything else after that. After that nice sandwich and sandwich. Sandwich and sandwich. I need to do that. Yeah. And the fact that it's a Lambert's sandwich and sandwich is almost too self-referential. Did you let them know you were of the Lambert's you know, plan? I, I, I actually have been playing it a little on the down low, maybe after a few more visits. Yeah. You know, I have them my credit card to pay, and you know, I I thought, oh, maybe they look at it and say, oh, you're a lamb too. They don't. They don't. They, they, they. <laughs> show me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I hope you have a good show tomorrow. Oh, I'm sure it will be. You know, it it just kind of takes care of itself. What town are you in, Gary? Bill Whitaker is asking. Sandwich. <laughs> I'm in Sandwich. We're not just talking about the sandwich, the meal. We're talking about sandwich to town. Actually in sandwich. I'm in sandwich. I'm I'm right in the middle of a big old sandwich. And it's not a soup sandwich. It's not a soup and sandwich. It's not a half sandwich. It's a full sandwich. Full sandwich. Mm -hmm. Do they, do, are your, I, I can't talk. Are your hosts, do they enjoy the kitchen? Yeah, they're they're not, you know, they don't they don't get real fancy in the kitchen. Um, but uh my friend Ruth actually does not cook at all. Her husband cooks when when cooking happens. And uh um but you know, that he whipped up a nice sort of curry chicken thing uh, the other day and uh I made I made a pasta sauce and pasta the other night and uh you know, we we eat we set out for they actually had really we found a place with really good thai food you know which is oh. like not an expected thing on cape cod i need the best drinking water is in sandwich according to bill wow well the 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 tap water here is excellent i mean I, you know i've been drinking it it must be a thing i guess you better i, I maybe you could bottle so bottle the water and sell it sandwich water sandwich water <laughs> I suppose. You guys, I just have to tell you, I was on 
hold with Alaska for 112 minutes. With Alaska, Alaska, the airline, not the state. Airline. Before right. Gabriella jumped on, mm -hmm. 112 minutes. I couldn't, because I bought a companion, I used a companion pass. Uh -huh. I couldn't switch everything online the way I would have liked to have done it. So I needed assistance. So I'm a little wonky right now, but. I understand. I understand those little, those little ordeals. Yeah, it happens every once in a while. But I'm so happy that you were here tonight and I'm looking forward to hearing your escapades in sandwich. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll have a, uh, I'll have a Carlo report next Sunday too of the of the lovely lovely reunion I I hope photographs will be taken to document it please and just so you know Sunday nights now mm -hmm. are, it's, it's about shoes stories oh. about shoes okay you have a particular pair of shoes that you bought at a particular place that you danced in them or you did you know something. okay all right well I you know I I can talk about my long time loyal relationship with Converse, you know, Chuck Taylor's, you know, which, which I was wearing so long before they became a hipster thing. You know, I was wearing them when I was 10. So, uh, you know, and I, I still have for the high top. Uh, usually the high top, I, I actually bought a pair of black low tops recently. Hmm. Um, but, uh, generally I'm a high top kind of guy. It's really funny to think that those were sort of the industry standard basketball shoes when I was growing oh up because because they don't support terrible. they, they, they oh. don't support your feet at all. They're terrible. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't know why I'm not completely disabled at this point after years oh, of like run around. But, running yeah. Those yeah. They're but they right. were, you know, those were the guy all, all before there was Nike, before there was Adidas, all like all the NBA players were were Converse. We're in Converse. Yeah. Oh my goodness it's crazy and they did and they did pretty good in them too i have to i put inserts in my heels Hello. yeah thank you michael bartoloni you're so sweet thank you julie have a beautiful night i did i did buy actually a proper pair of winter shoes oh. in in advance of my trip up here some really nice columbia you know uh high not 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 like real boots but they they cover the ankle and really nicely padded and warm and and weatherproof so uh i did that just like just before i came up here and uh haven't really needed them <laughs> paradoxically because it, no snow no rain no a little bit of rain but yeah it, the weather's been fairly mild it's gonna get colder though people call me and they're like oh it must be crazy there it must be and i go well it's actually um 52 degrees right or but right. the lighthouse that they showed on Christmas that was all iced over, the lighthouse yeah. from my hometown, it made national news. I walked all the way out there today. It's all gone. Mm -hmm. all, all this, there's not one drop of snow here. Now, by tomorrow morning, there might be a foot, but. That's that's always it. Although, you know, uh, our, our friends in California who always gloat about their weather, you know, are, are, are being yeah. a little quiet right now. We, we need it. No, yep. I, no, you need the rain part of it, but 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 right. the what 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 do they call it? Atmospheric river thing. River, is, the pineapple yeah. express, right? The bomb bomb cyclone. Mm -hmm. it, I said it's so it's just like being it's like being in Berkeley in 1989, 1990. But this one seems to be. I said that heard something that's 150 years since it's been like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Gary Gary does look good in black Converse. I have seen this. Yeah. Actually, this pair, I just realized this pair of low tops. Are they um, No, they're regular, the regular canvas black, you know. And I bought them specifically uh, to wear to, uh, you know, I, I, I wore a suit to Bobby Weir's um, show with the National Symphony Orchestra, but I couldn't go too formal. So I had the black, the black suit and the black Converse high tops and if I do say so myself, it, it was a, it was a striking ensemble. I'll 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 salute you to that. Where's your nose cup, nose mug? It's in my storage space. I haven't been. I should I should travel with it. I think, but it's okay. It's it's safe in the storage space, nice. along with the couch. Nice.
can't wait to see the couch. Yeah, the couch. I think the couch is going to need some work before I bring it back. It, 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 it's in need of some repair, but it, it's 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 not structurally sound. The uh, at least the uh, the slip covers are are fine though. You could probably have a jacket made out of the fabric. Uh, that's been discussed. A suit, a whole suit. And nothing. Someone talked about guitar straps, possibly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm. We'll and see. I, yeah. yeah. Or scarves <laughs> for us mm -hmm. gals. Mm -hmm. that want to have a. I like a. I have a guitar strap, but I would. Yeah, that would be a cool guitar strap. Yeah. I've been playing a little bit. Good. I've actually. I have. My guitar is right behind me here, um, but it's the first time I've I have played almost not at all, you know, in this in this nomadic, you know, it, playing it in Connecticut. I was in very close quarters with 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 my hosts, and Yonkers was also a small apartment. Here, I, there's a little more room, so I got out of my storage space and brought it up here. I, I need to put new strings on it. So I'll I'll play around with it a bit. Yeah, mine needs new strings too. I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning what needs hang around all these master guitarists all my life and mm -hmm. now I'm like how do you play that do you want yeah <clears throat> yeah I'll, uh, <clears throat> I may have it I may have it newly strung up by next week <clears throat> fine well because you have you know you eat a sandwich and you can put new strings on yeah but wash your hands after you eat the sandwich because uh... oh that's Andre and Andre and Rob Robin more than anybody mm -hmm. I gotta go wash my hands. I yeah. Go. Yeah. Oh, because it it I mean, I I I'm famous for killing guitar strings faster than just about anybody. But uh I think I have very oily hands in general. Um but one of the best things I ever heard, uh I think he's now long no longer with us. Max Bennett, great LA based bass player, was on Joni Mitchell's like Court and Spark and uh Hissing of Summer Lawns and just really, you know, first call studio cat played with Tom Scott for years. Uh, someone asked him, uh, how often do you change your bass strings? He said, the last time I put new strings on his bass was 15 years ago. Really? Yeah. And he loved, he actually loved the slightly dead sound. He, he thought it, it made the bass sound more like a string bass than an electric. Wow. And, uh, 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. On the same set of strings. He just reminded me, Leland, Leland Sklar is going to be on the show next month. Oh my God. Oh, I, I may have to build a small altar in front of my computer. Leland Sklar, I, I worship. Oh, Talk my. About his book. Oh, how incredible. What a great catch. That's mm -hmm. I, I will be watching that. I'll let you know when it happens. Fantastic. Well, Gary, don't eat the, the, those lobster sandwiches. What? <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> Where have you been, Suzanne? That's all we've been talking about. Hi, Michael Keel. Don't eat those lobster sandwiches. He's in sandwich. There's I'm in sandwich right and there's lobster. The window. Right. Lobsters, lobsters, lobsters actually walk up to the window and say, right. Hello. Yeah, right. Hello. Well, no, I, 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 I love lobster inordinately. I understand. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> All right, kids, I'm out of here. Thank you All very right. much, Gary Lambert. Thank you very much, Jenna Mina. Really fun. fun, fun, fun. Oh, yeah, always. See you next Saturday night. That is correct. Right here on 11.11. Good night, everybody. Love hard. Really hard.